everyone. Welcome to my sewing room. Thank you for showing up today. You gave me a reason to clean it. So today we are going to be going over some basics of precise positioning. Um, a few of our, uh, well, quite a few of our machines have the precise positioning, but before we get into that, everybody say hi to Ryan and Amy. They are in the background in their own homes watching what goes on in the background. So just shout out, say hello. So, and let's get on. So precise positioning. When do you use precise positioning? I use it quite a bit. So anytime that I am doing something in the turnable hoop, which is um, this hoop, I'll take it off real quick. I'll show it's on my machine right now. This is the turnable hoop. So it's extra, extra wide. And this does come with the Icon 2. And it is purchasable for the Icon 1, the Creative Sensation, Creative Sensations Pro, Pro 2, Creative Vision, and the 4.5 as long as you have the large embroidery unit. That machine, I believe, came with two different embroidery units. So you do need to have the larger one. So it is a, um, it's a great hoop. Uh, since I've been really good at precise positioning, I have been using this hoop a lot. Um, it's kind of addicting. It's just, I mean, I could go larger. I used to have the theory of if it doesn't fit in the hoop, one hooping, it doesn't need to be stitched out. So since I've learned the uh, precise positioning, I have changed my motto and I'm like, now I could go bigger. Um, the other time that I use precise positioning is, of course, when I'm doing edge to edge quilting. Uh, quilting in the hoop is very popular. It is an awesome way for you to be able to finish your own hoops without having a long arm in your home. I can't have a long arm. I have nowhere to put it. Um, and most people don't. And being able to do it in the hoop is a lot less expensive than, you know, quilting with your credit card by sending it off to someone to do it. And if you really like those feathers and things like that, and you're not that good at free motion, because I am not, I've taken many classes on free motion. And the one thing that I have learned is I don't care for free motion. So quilting in the hoop, I can get those feathers. I can get, I can get pebbles. I can get, you know, all kinds of different shapes and it doesn't have to just be edge to edge. Um, but I could do other quilting and I'll, I'll show you some of that um, in a little bit too. And then I also like using um, the precise positioning when I am doing my endless, when I use the endless hoop, because you're doing one continuous thing. And the whole point of endless is that you want to end one and start one embroidery where the last one ended. So it's endless. It's totally continuous. And that's what we're going to talk about today. There's other times that you can use the precise positioning. Um, so let's say you you hooped a, a shirt with a pocket and that pocket is kind of askew. Well, you don't have to necessarily unhoop it and rehoop it. You could rotate that design a little bit to get it to fit exactly, or, you know, move it exactly where you need it to be. So there are many times that um, you can use that um, precise positioning. We are going to start with the turnable hoop. And on the Icon 2, there are designs that come built in that you can use. But today I stitched out a simple one so that I can show you. I probably won't stitch this whole entire thing out. The whole point is this. I want you to see um, how this, how you would, how the precise positioning benefits from you. When I'm out on the road, there are so many ladies and, and gentlemen, sorry, there are both, who have this hoop who have this hoop and they say that they don't know how to do it or they used it and it didn't line up. And that's when I explained to them that yes, you do need to, to use precise positioning because in this hoop, you will notice that you have two different tension areas. And uh, so you have the top and the bottom. I'm sorry, give me one second. I, I didn't know that was in here. My apologies. Uh, so you have two different tensions that you have. You have the top and the bottom. Because when this hoop is on the machine, 
what it does is it stitches half of it and then it comes and it stitches the other half and that's where the turnable is so as you're stitching this one side out if you have something that's quite dense and you don't have the exact same, same tension on on both the top and the bottom screw well one side is going to pull in a little bit more than the other so therefore you have some shifting some pulling of the fabric the fabric's not shifting in the hoop but it's it's kind of it's kind of giving a, a pull on it especially if you're using a much denser design so i have this design here that i did this was in the uh the turnable hoop now this is um pretty intense even though it is applique there is quite a few fills here so when you have something dense like that it's pulling in on your fabric so it's only pulling in on half the hoop and not the other hoop so when you go to switch it you have more slack on this side of the hoop than you do on the other and that is why you want to use the precise positioning to line it up uh, there are many designs um, in the MySoNet library that are a lot more forgiving than others. Like this design right here. By the way, this was a cushion. And funny story, look at that. This was a fabric that I purchased at a big box store. And it's not their fault. What happened? It's a loose weave. And as I was trying to work with it, it just started coming apart. So the project I was going to do with it, I have to put aside. Now i got to think of a creative way to do this because this took hours to stitch out. This was a lot of my time. So I, so if you have any creative ideas of what I could do with this circle, you just type that right down in the box. Okay. So that is, a, I would say that's more a uh, slightly advanced design. But to get you started, there is this design. I put it on a little tote bag. So this design is a lot more forgiving when it comes to lining it up with the precise positioning. This design also has some yarn couching in it, and it also has what we call thread velvet design and a raw edge applique. But if you notice up in here, you're going to be connecting in here, and the yarn kind of covers it, and the way it, if you're close, you're going to be okay. This one you had to be spot on. So when you first start working with precise positioning, try and go something with that's a little more forgiving than jumping into this super heavy um, embroidered, embroidered design. I also did this one, and this one will be a cushion, just haven't put it together yet. This was just, um, this is a bean stitch, and what I did, was I used a variegated 12 weight thread and I did do some adjusting to my tensions just a little bit in the proportioning and I used a 120 top stitch needle. I wanted that um, thread to go through that needle without tons of thread breaking. So that is important. So this one too was quite forgiving. This easy design and I have um, batting. So what I did was I backed it with a batting and hooped it like that um, without stabilizer because the batting is acting as my stabilizer. Because this is going into a cushion, I wanted that extra layer of, of batting. So let me move over to the machine. Let me pop this back on so that we can see it. And I think I gotta go the other way. No. It goes this way. It used to be marked A and B. Okay, so let's head over to the machine. So we got my machine. So right now I put the hoop back on. And when it stitches one side, when it is complete, it you'll get a little message that says, you know, it's time to turn the hoop. So then you take the hoop off and you rotate it. And by the way, if you have the monitor, the MySoNet app on your phone and there is a monitor, it, if you walked out of the room, because some of these designs, I do walk out of the room, they're quite, um, they take a while, your phone will tell you when it's time to turn the hoop. How sweet is that? 
So then you don't have to sit in front of the in front of the machine and watch it. So let me pull this over here. Now, I only have the one camera, ladies and gentlemen, so please be patient with me. I do need to move it back and forth and I will do my best to keep this in focus. But I wanna show you what's happening on the machine. So this is where it is. So you can see that this half is already stitched out. Now we have to stitch on this half. Where my needle is right now is where a stitch, a marking stitch that should have stitched out, but it didn't stitch out. And you know what? That is okay. Because we can go a different route with this. This is going to be a learning, learning experience for us. So there was a, a little mark that would have been right here. And the designs that you um, retrieve from the MySonet library for the turnable hoop, there is a, a whole entire section of designs for the turnable hoop. Most of those have a, a little mark that physically stitches. It's it's a loose stitch. And that is that lives there so that when you turn the hoop, that's what you use to line it up with. Well, because it didn't stitch out for me, we're going to go a different route. And that's okay. So what I'm going to do is if you look at this design, there's, there's a point here and I know it is behind. There is a point right back here. I don't know if you can see my, we're gonna line it up with that point um, because we need to stitch this half. And to do that, I need to take you back to my screen over here and we're not going to get the whole entire screen in, but you're going to be able to see the most important part of my screen. I'm going to touch my precise positioning and that is in the embroidery stitch out mode. It is not in the embroidery edit mode. So you do need to say go, choose all your embroidery settings, and then go over into the stitch out area to do that. These, this screen may look a little different than some of the other machines. Um, I know that the Icon, the Icon 2, and the Creative Cessation, the Pro, and the Vision, they all should have all four options for um, the precise positioning. The 3.5, I believe, has what's called basic, where you just get um, the one and two, but that's okay. You'll be surprised what you can do with just the one and two points instead of all, all, uh, all four. I'll be honest, most of the time when I'm doing this, I only use one and two. So what we have here is we have our stitch point. And if you don't remember what this is, I love this about the Foth machines. This goes way back is this question mark. I know you can't see it, but if you touch a, this question mark that's on the top of my screen and then you touch a, an icon, I touched it, come on. It tells you exactly what it is and then you can get more information. I wish that was on my iPhone because there are so many things on my phone that I have no idea what they are. But what we're going to do here is for number one, Number one, we're going to be looking at our, our screen right here. And if we touch that, you should, oh, you don't see it. There's this little cursor right here. And and let me lift this. There's a cursor right here. So that is um, where the stitch is right now. I'm going to move that. Am I hooped upside down? No, I can't be. So I'm going to move that to a different position because there's a certain place that I want to get to to line this up. And if I move that, I think I am backwards. Did I touch the, did I touch my screen at all? 
So I need to close. Well, let's zoom out so I can see more of. Sometimes this window gets a little in the way. And let's move that. So this is the side that's going to be stitching. So if you look right in here, right here is where I'm going to try and line this up with. And I'm going to get so close. Then this right here, this is going to bring us right in to where this um, our cursor is. So we are zoomed in at 809%. I don't think there's any other machine that's going to allow you to get in that close. And you see how I moved it down in that area, but it is not sitting on any kind of stitch point right now. So where I want this to be is, I'm gonna move this over here. And sorry, I wanna, and then I'm choosing what stitch, where I want that to line up at. And then when I touch number two here, this is when we have to look at our hoop because our hoop is now going to move, okay? And you see that? Our hoop moved. So now you should be able to see right about where I want to where I want to be. So that's where on the screen this is the area where I moved that stitch point to. And if I bring my arm my wheel down, you can see where the needle's going down and I'm not exactly on it. And also by the way, if you have a hard time seeing your needle, we do have these really cool magnifying this magnifying set that you can move in and you can angle it to where you need it to be. And I can say, yep, I am that much closer. I'm going to move it out of my way for now because you do not see what I see. And it's going to be easier for us to do it this way. So I am, I am not quite where I want to be. So there's a control wheel on the screen. So I can start moving the machine or the, the hoop. And then I can test. And I am that much closer. I am pretty much at the spot where I want to be. This is at the exact spot where it left off. And now it's going to connect to each other. And then I'll go back to my screen. And I'm going to say OK. OK. However, there are two portions of this. There is the top and there's a bottom of this embroidery design. And I want to check below both places because just because it's lining up at the very top may not necessarily mean it's going to be lining up on the other end of the hoop. So then I will go back to my machine, to the screen. And I will touch precise positioning again. And I'm going to zoom back in so that I can see my whole entire design. And then there's the cursor there. And then I'm going to move this cursor. Oops, to the other side. And you can see it looks like I'm there, but I'm not. So I am going to touch on my zoom to cursor. And you see, I'm not there. So I'm gonna move this to this point. And if you look, you can see, I like to move that point so that I see inside that cursor, there's a tiny little hole. I like to move that so that I see a portion of the stitching. That way I know that that's my dead center and that is an actual stitch that I'm, I'm hooking up with. So on your screen, this is the control wheel. And right now what this control wheel is doing, it's working with step number one, which is placing your cursor at the point you want to be at. Okay. This control wheel is going to look exactly the same when I touch number two, and that is going to be moving your hoop. 
So I just had a loss of words. So you're not going to see that because we're going to go back to the screen, but know that whatever button is highlighted here, whatever icon is highlighted there, that is what the control wheel is working with. So now that I chose a spot where I want to line it up with, I touch the second one. Now my hoop is my hoop is moving. I'm trying very hard not to touch the physical camera. And where I chose to do it is right here. And if I bring my hand wheel down, you can see I am not there. It's off a little bit. So then I am going to bring my hand wheel back up. And this is going to give me an opportunity to use that control wheel. And this moves a tenth of a millimeter, I believe. So it's very small increments that it's moving. And because I'm very close, I don't want to touch the cursor on the screen because then my hand is going to move it way too much. Because I was very close, I am going to use that control wheel. I am still not quite there. And I will tell you, precise positioning is a game for the patient. And there I am. I am there. So now that I've checked that point, because I had to move it a little bit, I am going to go back and check one more time on the other side. So for this one, I'm going to say, okay. And it's going to move my hoop. And I am, I'm gonna to touch precise positioning again. And it wants to start there, but now I'm, because that's where, that was the last point that we checked. So that's where the needle is going to go. I'm gonna zoom back out and you're not gonna see this. And I'm going to, and I am actually going to change my mind of where I'm going to set this up. No, I'm not. And now I'm going to move this back down one more time. And zoom into that cursor. I am going to show you. Once I check the one point, I can go ahead and change where I want that point to be. And I think it's going to be easier to line it up somewhere else. You see how my hand just moves it like way too much? And zoom into that point. I'm going to put it there. Okay. It's hard to see, but I have my cursor so that I see a little black dot inside that cursor. And I'm going to go to now it's going to move again. And I'm close. And I am going to adjust that a little bit. When you first start to do this, you do need to have a little bit of patience. So I'm there. So now that I checked both points, I can say, okay. And I'm, I'm going to touch my stitch out progress and zoom back in to my screen. And now I can say, start. This is the stitch that it was lining up with. So it's gonna do that little stitch there. So that little stitch should have already had one. And you can see it lined up right where it left where it left off. I'm not going to do the whole entire thing. So when you first get started, you may need to jump back and forth. Um, check one point, check another one. You cannot just check one point when it comes to doing um, the turnable hoop or even edge to edge. You want to check multiple places just to see because you might need to do some tweaking. Um, this project I did, um, I stitched this out. So 
if you can see that. This is done on Soup du Bioni, and I was uh, really glutton for punishment because I did the whole thing. It's Soup du Bioni inside, and it is all done with metallic thread. I didn't use any um, other thread but metallic. And I was going to take this further and make it into a whole uh, whole cloth quilt, but I ran out of metallic thread. So I was lucky to get done what I did get done. If you look at this, this is four different hoopings. This was a hooping here, here, and here. So for these, so I, and you can see my blue marking. I marked the center of my fabric. And I, I this will fit a 200 by 200 hoop. When you're doing this and they just fit within a 200 by 200 hoop, you, you don't have a lot of wiggle room. So I went the next hoop up so that I would have plenty of wiggle room. I have the new 260 by 260 quilter hoop. So I ended up using that one. And I didn't worry about wasting stabilizer with using a larger hoop because this was essentially supposed to be a whole cloth quilt. And I added batting to it already so it would do some of that quilting. And I decided that I am not, if you look how messy that is on the back, that's just the way this design is made. It has a lot of jump stitches, a lot of knots and things like that. I decided I was going to um, do some additional quilting with just um, adding a backing to it and then just doing some maybe stitch in the ditch or something like that to adhere that backing to to the top of the quilt so that I didn't, I didn't want to quilt through all three layers because all of that those knots and the tie offs and stuff because it is applique. So there's a lot going on with that. Um, so I, I did line it up. The first one I did, of course, that first one, the first square is going to be super easy because you're just lining it up one side basically with your line. And then when you have your second, when you do your second, then you're lining up that corner and that corner with the previous stitched block. Not so rough, right? Then you come down here and now you have this one. This one's not too bad because you're just for the most part lining it up from this corner and this corner with this block. But then when you get to number four, number four, that's where you have to be a little patient. And what I did for this was I left my hoop uh, a little loose so that I can wiggle it. He's when you when you're lining this up, not only did you are you lining it up to its partner on the bottom, but you're also lining it up with the block that's on the top. So I checked multiple points. And it I'm not gonna lie, it took me about maybe 15 to 20 minutes because I kept going back and forth, checking one point, moving the cursor, getting that set, checking another point, moving the cursor. And I, I did that for three different points to get this to line up. I can't just do one because if I just focused on the center, then the top block and the bottom block may not touch across the row. So there is a way that you can use the rotation to rotate, um, to rotate that design. I'm not going to go in that into that too much because you do need to know pivot points and that would be a little bit more of advanced. So maybe we could talk about that the next time I'm I'm out doing a Facebook live for fall. Um, but it is something that you do need to be a little more patient with. And I don't want to say there's math involved, but there's there's some um, some logic involved. So if you're in a hurry. All I do is I unhoop and maybe stretch the fabric a little bit. Um, to get it where I need to be. So if I have two points set, then I'll stretch the fabric in the hoop so that I can get that third point. And it did take me a little bit of finagling. I'm not gonna lie, it does. Um, and like I said, this is this is a, a, a game of patience um, when you're doing the precise positioning. When you're doing the turnable hoop and you have markers uh, stitched in, it's a heck of a lot easier. But when you're dealing with something that has no markers, you do need to to have a little more patience with that. I hope that makes sense. I have a question here. Do you need to return your hoop before doing the precise positioning? Absolutely. Um, so it'll stop, it'll tell you to turn the hoop. You need to have the hoop on when you're doing the precise positioning because there's that two steps. 
you are sending your cursor for step one, saying, this is the stitch point I want to be at. And then you touch step number two, which is moving the hoop. And then your, your hoop is physically moving in your machine. And the cursor is going to the area or the hoop is going to the area where you set that cursor in step one. And that's when you do that fine tuning. So yes, you do need to have the hoop on. Have plenty of space around you when you use this hoop because it is it's 360 inches, it's 360 millimeters long. So my, my sewing table, I'm very close to a wall here. My, my table is um, counter width. So I have my machine, it's, it's like literally towards the edge of my uh, table here so that I have room for that hoop. If you're quilting in the hoop and using those larger hoops, that is also something um, to think about. I know this is off the beaten path. It's not because I positioning, but it is off the, you know, you, you, you're gonna have, your quilt is going to pile up in the back. You need to find a way to get that away if you don't have like, I don't have the space and I have a quilt over here that I quilted in the hoop and it kind of jammed because the bulk of the quilt was between my wall and the machine and my hoop didn't have the space to go. So if you're thinking about doing a larger quilt in the hoop and you can, uh, my mom loves the edge to edge quilting and I think she's done a, a queen size quilt, which is pretty cool. So if I need something quilted and I don't have time, I give it to my mom. Um, and she's done it for me. Take it to your dining room table or something like that. Your machine doesn't have to live there, but take it somewhere where you have the room to do it. And you, you, that table is also going to help you support it. I know that's off the, the beaten path, but just some word of advice there. Any questions on the four corners? So one other thing I want to tell you about these four corners is that this was um this is a design that is in the MySonet library and i decided i wanted to use these silk dubionis i've been collecting them through my travels um from dealership to dealership and i wanted to use them for this project with um, metallic thread silk dubioni is a very very loose weave so the original design is meant for um, raw edge applique and it's stitched down the applique fabrics with a bean stitch. I did not like that idea. The first one I did, it was fraying like you would not believe and I wasn't even done stitching the quilt out. So I had to go um, to ground zero, start over, uh, get a new piece of silk. And you know, silk's not cheap, but I encourage you to try other fabrics besides just quilters cotton. You can have so much fun and get totally different looks. So anyway, I'm going to take you over to my software really quick so that we can see this. I am going to present my screen. So this, this is the design when it was finished. Um, this is the original design here. So you can see that um, this was pretty much, it was just a bean stitch to hold this down in place. What I ended up doing was I ended up taking this into digitizing. Um, you can take it into Stitch Editor and make those changes too, but I found, um, I find that it's easier to make these changes in uh, digitizing because I just, I'm just a little more comfortable with the digitizing uh, portion than I am with the Stitch Editor. And I'll show this to you super quick as soon as this opens. So you can, I'm gonna start a design with no picture and 200 by 200 hoop is fine. You can bring in existing embroideries by going to insert embroidery and it remembers the folder that I was in. So this was the design. And here you can see this, it's all mapped out for me. And where they had, and I'm just gonna find one really quick. Uh, not as quick as I was hoping for. Wendy, we can't see your screen. You're only what sharing. Do you mean? Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Now, can you see it? Okay, sorry about that. 
So I'm in digitizing, I'm in the digitizing module and you can see this. This is the original design. So you can bring it in by going to insert embroidery right up here. Any design that you purchased, you can uh, you can bring in here and make changes to it. And like I said, I find it easier to do the editing here in this module than in the stitch editor. If you are more comfortable with stitch editor or you don't have the platinum version, that's okay too. It can be done in there too. But all I'm going to do, and I'm just going to pick one here um, so that I can move on. Man, where are they all? Here, this triple stitch right here. So that, if I right click on it and go to properties and it's set for a triple stitch, I can just change it to satin and choose my width and I'll just say 3.0. And I can also change my density. Ooh, that's kind of big. I can also choose my density and say apply and okay. And if you see down here, you can see how easily I change that from a, uh, a triple stitch to a satin stitch. So I was able to um, bend the design to my will just so that I can have it so that I can have a satin stitch to accommodate my soap to Bioni, and it worked out really great. It did take me a little bit of time, but I did it while I was um, while I was at the airport, sitting there with a delayed flight. So it gave me something to do, right? Because you don't have to be connected to the internet to do that. Alrighty, any questions? All right. Sorry about that, that you couldn't see my screen. All right, let's move on to the next one. So the other uh, thing that you can do um, with precise positioning is, of course, with your um, endless designs. So I have this little dress that I made. And you can see that this goes all the way around the circumference of the skirt. And this is a design that I did digitize in, in the software. I had a vision. I made that vision come true. Um, it took a little bit of time, but it, I, I made it work. And how I did this was after I digitized it, I have one design and then I just repeated it at the bottom. And I did use my endless hoop. And what I found that was super easy was I hemmed it first in a way. I, I surged off the edge to make it clean so that, and then I, I hemmed it, uh, I folded it up. I gave it a really good press to exactly where I want that hem to be. If this needs to be altered because it's gathered here at the bit part, then if I needed to bring it up and I, I didn't have to, cause it's a sample, um, it could be altered from up here and not down at the hem. Not as an easy alteration, but if you need to, that's how you can do it. So what I did was finished off that edge with the serger, and then I folded it under and gave it a really good press. So I had this really nice crease at my hem. And, and after I did that through the whole entire circumference, then I fused on, this is a fusible tearaway. And I fused it all the way across the whole entire circumference of that skirt. And it wasn't a circumference at that point. Of course, I did it flat and not in the round. So I fused it all the way down so that when I had this in my hoop, and that's just, I'm going to switch this out. Take out this. All right, I'm gonna put this one on. Well, I don't know if I'm necessarily gonna put it on the machine because then I have to choose a different design, but you'll get the gist. Let me go back here to two. So if this was on my machine the proper way, because here is, is the connector. So this would go onto my embroidery unit and if I start with my, I do my first embroidery design. I, 
I would do my first embroidery design. And then I don't even have to take this off my machine. All I need to do is pop this up and then pull this forward. And when I do this, I, I leave a little bit of the last design in the hoop so that we can see it. So then I have a point to line up on. The other thing I also did was because I have this nice crease right here, I was able to use that as a marker as well. So when I have it in the hoop, if I line that edge up in the hoop exactly the same as I did my previous design, then all I need to do is just keep pulling this forward and then use my precise positioning, just like I showed you for the turnable hoop and line it up that way. And that, that's going to make life a little bit easier because if I am straight down here, down here, then I'm going to have a more successful rate of lining it and lining up my next design. And there's basically only one point for, there's only one point that you're lining up with your um, endless designs. And that is the last stitch that is stitched on the previous design. So you're only trying to match up the first stitch of the last design when you're doing endless. So if you want to play with precise positioning and you're brand new to it, start with something endless because there's just that one point and it'll help you get familiar with going from the screen back to the hoop, if that, if that makes sense. All right, let's move on. Of course, you can also do um, same kind of thing with your edge to edge quilting. But for that, oh, there's two endless hoops, by the way. There is a much larger one I didn't put on the machine um, just because then you wouldn't see it all. So there's two different size endless hoops. So check with your machine to see which one you could take. I know that the icon, the icon two, the create a sensation, I believe you can take both of those. Okay, so for edge to edge, I already have this set up. I like to use the magnetic hoop because there's a few different points that you need to, uh, to line up. And that is the first stitch and the last stitch of the previous one. And then you may need to finagle your, um, you may need to finagle your, um, your quilt itself. So if you're using the mag magnets, you can just lift a magnet and give a little tug and reposition it. When I did, when I did that four corner one, I did hoop my fabric. I did not use the magnetic hoops because I wanted to try and control the, 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 the pull of the fabric within the hoop because I knew I was going, that was four hoopings. So if I hooped it, I have more control over how much that fabric is going to get pulled in especially with um, if I decided to do something with a dense design. When you're using the magnet hoop, there is some slack there. Um, so it, you don't have as much control, but it's super convenient for um, edge to edge quilting. Edge to edge quilting is a little bit more forgiving than doing something like my four corner uh, lining up in the hoop. So this is where you just need to, to go and, and practice and, and try the different steps. Um, and yeah, just try the different steps. All right, one other one I wanna show you is what if I am trying to line something up and I need to get it centered into something like I did here. So I have this little, I guess it's table mat and I have a, this design right here. Well, it's in the dead center of that on point square. So how do you how do you go about that with playing with stitch points? This is quite easy, and I'm going to show you how we're going to do it on this bottom one. So the first thing you want to do is you want to find that center, and that's what I did here. Found the center, and give me a minute because I want to clear my screen. 
when you go to embroidery edit, because I didn't finish stitching out, it gives me the message basically saying that if you make changes, you're not responsible. The machine's not responsible when you come back. So I'm just going to say, okay, because I want to clear that. And I know you're not seeing everything that I'm doing here. But let's go ahead. And I am going to go ahead and delete this design. My hands just are not bringing it up today. So we'll go into embroidery edit and let's go ahead and choose it and we'll dump it. And I'm going to change my hoop because I have the 360 by 260 hoop in my hand. And we'll say okay there. And then let's go get the embroidery design that I used. And there it is. Okay. So now I'm going to say, I don't, it doesn't matter where I have it in the, in, on my screen right now because it's going to be moved. So we'll go to stitch out. All that's correct. My arm is going to move. And I will just slip this on. And it's on. Okay, so here's my design. And I know I need to get it into the center of that square. And if I go into precise positioning, and right here I have the option where I could put it in the center. Now there is no stitch there. However, that is the center of the design. So if I choose that as my First step, when I touch step two, now I can go ahead and move this into place. And it doesn't matter where the first stitch is because I'm just trying to find the center of that design. Okay, so I'm all the way up here. On my screen, I am going to touch it and pull it down and get it within the area. This is when I would touch it and move it down opposed to using the control wheel. If I were to use the control wheel, it would take me a bit of time to get there. I am not there yet, as you can see. I am in the vicinity of it. So now if I just, so I'm in the second step. And if you hold down that control wheel, sometimes it goes a little bit faster than what you want it to. And again, if you can't see that, we do have these magnifying glasses that you can um, magnify into it so that you can see it a little bit better. Let's turn that hand wheel down. Not there yet. And some of you may be thinking, well, she has the icon too. Why doesn't she just scan it or use projection? I will tell you, I am a lot more, ooh, right on the money. I am a lot more comfortable with using the precise positioning if I want this to be exactly where it needs to be. Sure, the scanning is nice to have, and so is the projection. But you cannot zoom in with those two features as close as you can with the precise positioning. And not everyone has the icon, too, where they have that option. So now that I have this dead centered, all I have to do is just say, okay. And now I can start stitching. And you'll notice, no, it did not start stitching in the center because all we did was we only wanted to find the center of that said design. We weren't telling it to start stitching in the center. So this is a good way, a very easy way for you to get acquainted with precise positioning is to do something like this because you marked it, it's one point that you need to find, you found the dead center and you're good to go, right? 
So that is great. And I already did, I'm going to cut this. And I, I did the same thing up here in this area. Uh, for the stippling. But had I known um, that the design was this size, I should have did a test out. Um, I would have moved it back so that I had a, um, a good border around that stipple design like I do down here. Because there's a lot of unquilted area. And if I would have moved that design down, but I focused on going to that one single point right here. And if you look at it, I am right there at that point at the beginning of my stippling. So I was, I couldn't get any closer. But now that I know, I probably would have marked this and moved it back a little. So there is, is that option. So I love that feature. This is an easy one to do. But I have one more I want to show you before we're out of time. And there's so much more I can talk about precise positioning, but I only have an hour, right? So while we're still at the machine, I told you earlier that if you had, um, if you hooped something and it was kind of crooked, you could um, easily rotate it in the design. So this is, um, this is a little extreme, this line that I drew here, but it'll help, um, help with my point of what I was doing. But if you, if this was the top of a pocket and it was slightly off, you do have the opportunity where you can change that. So let me go back and get rid of this design. And change my hoop. And I have the 120 by 120 set up. And let me delete this design. And I'm going to take you back to the screen so that you can see some of the stuff that I'm doing here. Okay. So I'm just, for the sake of time, I'm just going to do my name again. So we have these nice little alphabets in here that are built into the machine and they come in different sizes, which is super nice. And I, I'm a girly girl. So I am going to go with that font with the curls. And when I choose it, up comes my keyboard. And so that it's not yelling at me, we'll go into, I just spelled, I spelled it wrong. I'm glad it shows here because I spelled my name wrong. And then I can say, okay, and close that. So there is, there is my name. Again, it doesn't matter where it is on the screen because it, we're going to move this. I'm going to set it up to go with the second line. So we'll go to stitch out and say, okay. I'm attaching my hoop. Okay, so one little thing here. If you notice, I am in ghost mode right now. So on this design, this was a learning lesson. On this design, you can see that, that that is, it's down a little bit lower than what I wanted it to be. Because when I first, when I did this stitch out, I was in ghost mode when I went into precise positioning and I was too lazy to go back and take it out of precise positioning. So, so, I really couldn't see the screen because it's almost white on white. So I was pretending I knew exactly where I was putting that stitch marker. So just some word and some advice before you do this, go into precise positioning, take it out of ghost mode. Just, just a suggestion. Okay. So now I take it out of ghost mode and we can see my name. And if I go to precise positioning, Oh, it wants my hoop. Got the hoop back on. Let's see. Okay. And there's my precise positioning. And I get to choose where I'm going to put that cursor. And because I have that line, I am going to move this cursor down to the bottom of the W so that that is where it's lining up 
on the line that I drew. Now, looks like I'm in that area, but I don't think I am as close as I think I am. And that's why we are going to zoom to cursor and we can get a lot closer. So I will move that. down. Okay. I know you're not going to be able to see this on the screen, but inside that cursor and that little free area, that blank area, I do see one of my, uh, a stitch, uh, a turquoise stitch. So I do see that. Now I'm going to go to step two, which is going to be in the hoop. And now I'm going to move this, move this design up to that line. Okay, and I'm going to move, I'm going to do a fast move. What I'm doing is I'm on my screen and I am dragging up that name. And I am not going to have room. I didn't hook this where I have enough room. And that's okay, because you know what? As seen on TV, we'll just move it down. There is an invisible parameter in these hoops that you cannot stitch into, and it's a safety feature. So no matter what make and model machine you have, there is that invisible parameter. And I was going outside the hoop even though the line was inside the hoop. Okay, so now I'm not even close to that line anymore. That's okay, because now I will just move it down. And as it gets close to that line, I'm going to turn my hand wheel and I passed it up a little bit. That is where I'm going to use the control wheel that's on the screen of my machine. And you can see that it's moving very little increments. So I can fine tune exactly where I want this to be. And do I want it to be just above the line or do I want it directly on the line? I'm going to do it directly on the line. And there I am, I am directly on the line. I, I, I can tell you scanning and um, projection will not get you that close. Now I'm going to move over to step three on the machine. And that is to set our match point on the screen. And what it means by match point is can't see, there's my Wendy. So now if I go to three, I have another cursor. And now I'll take that cursor and line it up where I need that to be. And because this on a, is on a slant, I'm gonna take this over to the eye, the end of the eye. See that? I'm going to zoom in, not that close. Move it closer. And I'm taking it right to that end of that stitch point. So that should be the last stitch that I have in, in that letter I. And when I touch the fourth, what this is going to do is now we have to go back to the machine. And now we're just moving the word down. So if I were to do Wendy, I have it lined up here on this line, but that's where um, it's going to end. So it doesn't match up. I want that eye down here on this line. So our control wheel on the screen now has a left or a right. And if you touch the right, it's rotating the design clockwise. This one takes it counterclockwise. So because I need to get that to slant down, I'm going to keep pushing this until I get that lined up with the line. 
So it looks like the hoop is just moving up and down. And I'll show you in a moment. And I know we're going over a little bit. Sorry about that. Not there yet. And I'm right on the line. Okay. And I'm going to say okay on my screen because I got it right on the line. I'll say okay. My hoop moved. And I'm going to go to stitch out progress so that I can zoom to hoop so that you can see. Now you see that my name is, no, you don't see. Now you see that my name is actually slanted. So step three and four is rotating it. So it's left this point and moved this point so it would come down. So like I said, this is a little bit of an extreme. But if you were to hoop your pocket or had, or if you had a stripe that's in your fabric that you wanted to line this up on, you could. And so now that I have both of them lined up, I can start stitching. The end of the W is going to fall on that line and so is, is the I. I'm not gonna stitch the whole thing out. But you get the idea. Okay, do we have any questions on that? Like I said, there is so much more that we can do. I just kind of scratched the surface. I only have an hour. So maybe next time we can go in depth with maybe just one, one single thing so that we can, I can show you how to do some rotating. Like what I did with um, my four points, um, my four different corners. I can, we can go into that. So sometimes you may need to, to adjust it that way. But I found for my four four corners that matched there, I found it easier than trying to do the rotating. I just just give the fabric um, a stretch, and I had a marking on the fabric itself, which helped me a lot. And then moving up to the next size hoop that you have that will fit that design is going to give you all of that wiggle room to to play with, um, and it, it'll make your life a little bit easier. And it, your life, if you're the things that you're doing are a little bit easier, you're going to end up doing them more, correct? And and we love what we do. So if I don't have any questions, I will tell you the next Facebook Live is Thursday, August seventeenth, with Karen Charles having fun with free motion thread painting. And the next my SoNet Live is going to be August Wednesday, August 9th at three p.m. Uh, Eastern time with Mickey Hudson. Who will be doing? Who will be talking about? Oh, the draw and paint window in digitizing. So enjoy that one. And if you don't have any more questions, I'm just gonna say go forth and create something wonderful. And I'll see you again. Bye.